You slip one knit wise, slip one knit wise, knit two together through the back loop. Through the back loop? Let me see. Slip, slip. Hey everyone, it's Natalie, also known as Nitty Natty. Welcome to episode 113 of the Love in Stitches podcast. Or should I say sock cast? Because it's going to be another parade of socks today. But I do have some finished objects to show you, so I'm excited about that. First of all, it is quite loud outside right now. It's like three o'clock on a Saturday afternoon. And for whatever reason, the traffic is crazy. People are honking. So I do apologize for that. There's nothing I can do. Um, so enjoy the city background noise. It is a very warm day. Well, not very warm, like relatively warm, not like Texas warm. I think it's in the high eighties today, but all over the past 10 days it's been beautiful and i've had my window open and i've had my little mini fan going while i've been working at my desk and it's been amazing and now that's over <laughs> i guess or it's over for a little while until we actually go into fall so i will be anticipating that for sure um getting my phone out of my pocket can you hear that maybe only if you have headphones in can you hear that um, but anyway, I am feeling amazing. Well, maybe not 100%, but so much better than I was the last time I recorded a podcast. Thank you all for your well wishes. I'm feeling so much better and so, have so much more energy and I'm feeling a lot more like myself and hopefully sounding more like myself. I'm not quite there yet. It's still a little tickle in my throat, um, but not nearly the, <laughs> I don't need nearly the amount of coughing breaks that I did last time. Okay, let's look at some finished objects here. I have two finished objects. They're not finished, finished, finished because I just did the grafting on the toe of these socks like in the last 30 minutes. So first, this is a big finish because this is a long-term whip, are my String of Hearts socks. These are by Maddie Hobbs and they are a cable sock pattern. Um, you can't really see on the blockers here, but the cables there we go, make a heart pattern. And I've seen a lot of these on my feed lately. A lot of you were knitting these and finished them up during second sock week. So that is really exciting to see. Um, there's a right and a left sock. So the cable, like when you wear them, you can have the cables on the outside. At least that's how I'm planning to do it. Um, and these turned out really, really nice. So I use a yarn from Arkansas Yarn Company, which is where Maddie actually teaches classes. And it was an 80-20, I believe. So I used a size two needle, um, which did make them go a little bit faster because I was able to cast on the smallest size when, uh, when I'm using a size two needle. They fit great. I love them. I still need to weave in the ends. I think that this one was finished last week. And this is the one, yeah, this is the one that I finished today because um, I knit the entire foot. Like last time it just had, I had just picked the stitches back up um, from ripping the needle out. <laughs> and so I, I finished them last night. I finished the knitting last night while I was out and about. And then I grafted them this morning. Well, not this morning, a few minutes ago. <laughs> and I haven't had the chance to weave in the ends yet because I'm getting ready to go out of town. And I was like, more important for me to just finish these. Cause like, I couldn't leave them with just the grafting and then go out of town. And I didn't wanna bring them with me to graft them and then just be carrying around a finished pair of socks on a trip. Um, so I was like, let me just get these done. And then if I do have time after recording the podcast, I can weave in the ends and block them and leave them and come back to totally finished socks. So I might actually do that here in just a minute. So that's one of my finished objects. And then I finished a second pair of socks. These are from Sock Week. So I guess for me, I have two, two entries for second Sock Week <laughs> if I was participating. Um, I mean, I'm always participating if I could win prizes. Um, so I finished another sock. These are Suburban Stitcher. And I do believe I have, whoa. <laughs> I was looking for this label because I'm like, toss, time for that to go in the trash. Don't need that anymore. Um, nope, that's not it. Oh, you know what? I did a giveaway for the other half of this yarn. And so I sent the label along with the giveaway. So I don't have this label anymore. This is Suburban Stitcher beneath the surface. And one of the minis that it came with was this gray. I can't remember what she called it. And I only used one of the minis. I didn't use 
the blue I sent it along with the other half of the skein. So here's what's so strange to me about socks is how little yarn they can take just depending on how you knit them, how long, how big your foot is, if you use contrast colors. So I got this yarn, 100 gram skein. I split it in half, 50 grams, 50 grams. And I was planning to use one 50 gram for sock one, the other 50 gram for sock two. I do that a lot so that I can knit both socks at the same time, which is not, not what I did during sock week because I wanted to knit as many for socks as I could. So I finished up the first sock and looked at the 50 gram skein I started with. And I was like, this is a lot of yarn. So I weighed it and I still had about 30 grams left. So instead of hanging on to all that yarn, I um, used half of it as a giveaway. <laughs> and then I still have this much left. I haven't weighed it yet, but my guess is it's, uh, it might be under 20 grams, but I bet it's really close um, to 20 grams. Well, that math doesn't work out, does it? If it was a 50 gram skein and then I had 30, that means I used 20. So this might be more like a 10, 15 gram skein. I'll have to weigh it, but I can definitely use it for some scrappy projects now. All right, so both of these still have markers in them. Oh, you know what? The ends are woven in on this one. So I'd already finished this one. And then this week, oh yeah, I knit a ton. Okay, so I felt like I shouldn't record a podcast this week um, because I didn't feel like I did it a, lot, a lot of knitting. Um, but I actually did a ton of knitting. It was just on mostly this project because at the beginning of, or not the beginning of this week, since I recorded the last podcast, I was right here at the cuff. So I knit pretty much this entire sock this week. I knit this, all of this yesterday, um, except for a little bit at the end that I finished just before the podcast. Um, but we went to the zoo yesterday. I'll, I'll talk more about that at the end of the episode, but we went to the zoo yesterday. And so we had maybe an hour train ride there, of course, an hour back. And then while we walked around the zoo, I knitted and it was great. And I got so much done. Um, so I get a lot more done out of the house sometimes than I do in my house. Cause when I'm home, I'm like, I'm working and I'm doing chores and I don't know, maybe you're the same way. Like it's harder to get stuff done at home um, sometimes than it is when you're out and about and you can't, you don't have access to those things. So happy, happy, happy that this is another pair of done that I don't need to bring with me on my trip. And now I am down to, uh, it looks like three sock whips, which I'm gonna show here in just a second. So I would like to get the ends woven in and block those before I leave today in an hour and a half. We'll see. I have a lot more to do. I doubt that that's going to happen, but that's okay. Um, so two finished objects for the week, hopefully three next week, because I'd like to finish all my socks, get them all off the needles and start fresh with just doing one pair a month. Um, like I used to, that would be really, really great. Um, okay. So yeah, let's just go into whips. So the other one that I put quite a bit of work into this week. Um, again, this is second sock week, so I've been trying to get a lot of sock knitting done and that's all, all the projects that I have right now. Um, I did do quite a bit. I was right down here on my Moon Glow socks. So this is Moon Glow Yarn Company and it is the Sharktastic Summer Sock Set. And so it's a bunch of minis. I have the first sock already done, ends woven in and everything. So you can kind of see where I'm at. Um, I'm probably gonna bring this one on the plane with me and try to get a lot done on this. Um, so after this color, I have the heel and then I have pretty much the same same deal going on for the leg, three more colors and then ribbing and then that's it. And then it'll be done. And these go so fast because I'm also using a size two needle and I only have 48 stitches, so it's so fast. Um, but yeah, I did do quite a bit on these this week. Let me go ahead and move my cute little marker so I can see how much progress I can make today, later on. But these have been really, really fun to work up. And let me see, I'm gonna grab the colors. So here's the two colors I've already finished, purple and blue. I have, um, I haven't weighed them, but I think I have about five, four or five grams left. So I would like to make another pair of socks using these colors, except that they'll be more gray, more of the main color than and the stripes will be uh, more of an accent. So I do, I do want to do that. And also I wanna try, um, so these are a size two needle. My typical size is a one. I only went to a size two because this is an 80-20 yarn, but 
This yarn, this 80-20, usually that's a little thicker for me, is not that thick. So I think I can actually use a size one and be happy with it. So I'm gonna try that out. I'm gonna experiment at some point. I don't know if I'll do it right away or not, um, but I do wanna experiment that. Experiment with that. <laughs> and I've got it in my, my sock week bag. This is a long sock week. It's an extended sock week and it's just socks all the time. Here's another cute little sock week bag from Nanny's Attic Creations. I haven't worked on these socks this week at all. Um, here's the first one, not done. It needs a heel. Come on now. These are from, hold on, hold on. Man, now there's a an ambulance. And the thing about ambulances coming through is that because there's so much traffic, they can't get through right away. So you hear the siren forever. Um, obviously that's very important that they, <laughs> that they get where they need to go, but it's just like, it's an observation, right? Normally you just hear it going, right by, you know, but here in the city, the reason I think you hear sirens all the time is because it takes them forever to move. <laughs> forever. Okay, Tia's Terrific Threads. There we go. Colorway is 12 feet deep. She makes this color every single year in the summertime, and it is a uh, sharky colorway. I've got my waist yarn. Oh, you know what? I better wait until it passes. Okay, I think the siren is gone. Not 100% sure. We're talking about these socks. I haven't done anything <laughs> and it's not even really a sock. It's barely a sock, but given that, well, it wasn't this one, but given that this sock was in the same state as this one just last week, I feel like I can get this one done before the next episode. So I barely even have any ribbing. I'm doing two by two, barely have any ribbing on these socks. So I will finish this sock and then I will go back and I will do the uh, heel, the afterthought heel on both socks because I'm just using the self striping yarn for all of it. Isn't that so fun? The gobstopper ball. I love it. Okay, so that was my second sock whip. I have one more that I did put a little work on this week. My vacation socks, my tropical flamingo socks. We were at the zoo yesterday um, by the flamingos and I'm like, darn, if I had my flamingo socks, that would be the perfect picture. <laughs> so I only put a tiny bit on there uh, just from that, this stitch marker. So cute, adorable. Um, and I only did work on that. I was prioritizing my sock week socks because they're older. This one is my newest sock whip but I was doing something, I don't even remember now, and I needed a vanilla sock and everything else was kind of in like, was I going to the movie? Oh, maybe, I don't remember. Anyway, I needed a vanilla sock, a vanilla sock for something, and so I just worked on this for a little bit, and then once I was able to get my other socks to a more, you know, take around with you type of a thing, I started working on those. So let me move this marker. This seems like, Definitely something I can get done here. Ooh, I do not like these. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I thought my I thought my um, hardware on my marker was broken, but the light bulb stitch markers were in the way. So I like to keep my light bulb stitch markers hooked onto my progress keeper. So I need to put another light bulb stitch marker somewhere around here. I'll count every 20 rounds, because I know for me I need 65 for the foot. And I'll also mark the leg, I did every 20 rounds for the leg. So I know I did ribbing, 20 rounds, marker, 20 rounds, and then I did the heel. I don't I don't need to mark that. And then I marked the end of the heel, and then I need a marker here for 20 rounds. And so that one is well into the foot, and then I'll need to make the other one. <laughs> so I've got both my skeins in there. So since I'm not doing any contrast yarn for this sock, it will be interesting to see how much yarn it really takes for me to make a sock without using any other skeins, if that makes sense. Like, do I really need, I, I know I don't need 100 grams of yarn, but how much do I really need to, in total? So that'll be interesting to find out. All right, so what does that make it? I've got an entire sock for this one and a half. I've got pretty much an entire sock for the self-striping ones, so that's two total, two and a half. I've got two heels, so let's just say that's another half, so three. And then I've got my moon glow. So I've got like, what, three and a half socks to do? You know, that's plenty of knitting. 
It's a lot of like plain knitting, but I think that's plenty of knitting for me to bring on that trip. I was debating casting on something new, but every time I do that, I like never knit anything else and then no progress is made. So I'm gonna be disciplined and I'm gonna bring my three sock whips on my trip with me. And my backup plan will be that I have moon glow yarn to make another pair of socks if I need to. If I like run out of knitting somehow and knit a lot, we'll see. I'm still gonna be like working and stuff on my trip. So I don't know how much knitting I'll be doing. Um, oh, one more thing. I wanted to show a little acquisition that I got. Um, so Deladino Deladino is no longer making markers. And my last order came in a few weeks ago. So they come um, from Mexico. So they do take quite a while and I ordered it months ago. But one of my sweet friends, Wanda, ordered me some markers and they arrived. So I wanted to show them off. She picked these out for me. And what's really cool is that I didn't have any of these already which is great because we shopped the same update. You know, you would have thought there might be overlap and not at all. So I thought that was so sweet. She did warn me they were coming. Um, is that another siren? Oh, these are so cute. Okay, so let's take a look at these. We've got a flamingo cake, all pink. You know I love that. A shark macaroon. Like, look, it's a macaroon or a macaron, one of those. And then a dinosaur tea cookie kind of thing. I love dinosaurs. Oh, that's so cute. There's little macarons on there too. Oh, those are adorable. So thank you so much, Wanda. These are so sweet. I need to actually send you a message personally <laughs> and tell you thank you. But I was like, oh, I need to include those on the podcast. Sorry, that was another si um ambulance siren. I also, while I was sitting here like waiting for it to go by, I realized I didn't show the yarn o'clock yarn, which was the flamingo yarn. And it's called tropical flamingo. Yes. And it's so soft, such a different base. I love it. Okay. Let's get into some questions. So I have caught up. Well, I will today on all the questions in the Ask Me thread. So moving forward, I'm hoping to answer questions every week, three to five questions, that's usually how many are in there, um, so that I can actually answer your questions in real, more in real time. <laughs> that's my hope. Um, but I love it when you put questions on the Ravelry Ask Me thread, it's in the Ravelry group, Love and Stitches, um, because your questions not only are gonna help me like I'm not only answering you when I answer them on the podcast other people might have the same questions and I feel like it helps everyone it also makes me think harder <laughs> about knitting and everything so I'm going to start with the last five questions but I have answered all of the previous questions all the ones that I have gotten really behind on if, if you're thinking wait you missed mine I didn't miss it I just didn't answer it in the podcast I did a Q&A video on Tuesday where I caught up on all of the questions plus answered some new questions from Instagram, um, mostly knitting and crochet related, but some are like um, some personal questions and different stuff like that. So that's a really fun video. If you want to go check that out, I'll have it linked. Um, okay, so here is our first question for t today. Um, this is from I'm Olivia Lee. Um, Hi, Natalie, what stitch markers do you use when using larger needles that regular stitch markers don't fit through? I've started to knit a sweater with bulkier needles, but I realized that my go-to stitch markers don't fit through the needle. Any suggestions? Thanks. So I wanted to show you my largest stitch markers that I have, which are not super large. Like they're not going to fit in 11 or 15 or anything like that. Um, but these are my favorite plain stitch markers. I usually use these. They're really thin, so they don't disrupt the stitch or like make any gaps or anything. I typically use these and then I'll use like a dangly one to be my beginning of round. So it's a little more distinct. I don't like a lot of stuff dangling. So I really like these. These are the Coco Knits stainless steel markers. It comes with this size and then the smaller size, which I use more often because I don't like my um, stitch markers to be too much bigger than the needle. Now, if that's not going to fit, they do make larger ones. Um, Clover makes they're like blue and gold and they're a little bit rubbery, but they're thin. Um, those fit up to, I think a size 15 needle and you can get those maybe at your local yarn shop, maybe at Michael's, maybe on Amazon. I'll have to look for those. Um, but I should look for those because I, those were the markers that I used all the time. I'm going to make myself a note. I'm going to make myself a note right here. Look, 
for clover stitch markers. So they have two packs, at least they used to. The bigger ones were blue and gold, or like yellow, and then the smaller ones were green and purple, I think. Um, but I use those all the time till I found the stainless steel. I just find them a little easier to slide. Um, but that would help for going up to an even larger needle. Now, if none of those work, you can kind of um, substitute like something that's not a real stitch marker and use uh, rubber, like not big rubber bands, but like hair tie rubber bands. Um, I think they make some that are like, not the tiny, tiny ones, but maybe about like this big around. So those might work as well. And then as the backup, 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 you can always use yarn and just tie off little circles and that you can control how big it is and make it as big as you want. Okay, next question is from Slytherin Stitch. Um, hi, fave YouTuber. Oh, that's, that's so nice. Um, I was wondering if medium weight yarn would be acceptable for the fall garment make along, since I'm a crocheter and need to start gathering as much yarn as I can now to be ready by August 15th. Thanks for your time, Jackie. So, all of that information on the fall garment make along got posted on Monday, finally. I know it took me a long time to get that out. Um, but yes, any weight yarn is totally acceptable acceptable. The fall garment make-along is starting on August 15th, is a very flexible make-along. You can use any weight yarn, any, any size garment. Honestly, all that you need to be doing is working on a garment. It can be a whip and just chatting in the thread. It's not a finish things type of a make-along because I just want to encourage people to work on things. And everyone has different stuff they want to work on. Everyone has different amounts of knitting they need to do. If you pick a lace size like dress <laughs> versus like a baby size bulky sweater, like there's just, it's too hard to compare for finishing things. Um, but anyway, long, long way around. Yes, medium weight yarn is totally fine. This question is from Karen's Adventures. Hi, Natalie, I love the podcast. In your recent vlog, you were packing for your trip. You mentioned needing to switch the hardware of your new progress keepers. I remember you mentioning this before too, but I can't remember what you switched to. Can you show a picture of the version that you don't like versus the version that you do like? I've been thinking about making myself some fun progress keepers and was trying to decide what clasps to buy. You are not the only one. I'm making myself another note here, sorry. Progress keeper hardware. <laughs> Professional. All right, you're not the only one that had this question. I've answered this um, individually to a few people since I last talked about that. So I bet there are other people that have the same question. So first of all, I have a video that I will link. It's a tutorial on how to take any kind of charm and turn it into a progress keeper. This is great if you have old jewelry, if you find something somewhere, like I used to find charms at Disneyland and then I would turn them into progress keepers. So I want to show you the class that I don't like. Um, and I'm going to use this as an example. Again, these are my favorite stitch markers. It's not about the charm. It's about the hardware. So I do not like these lobster claws. It doesn't matter if they're a small one or a large one because these are the larger ones. My nails are long. They're kind of thick because I get the dip. And for whatever reason, I just have a hard time like pressing that down and they're not that big. So I don't like, like I can't like capture a stitch with them. So these are the ones that I do not like. That's just me though. If you like lobster clasps, these are called lobster clasps, by the way. If you like those, great. If you don't, you can change them, which is great. <laughs> so the ones that I do like are these. These are called lever backs or earring backs. So you can kind of see that it looks like an earring. It opens up nice and wide okay this part is really thin so you can like hook a whole stitch i usually do like a stitch and a half like i will whoosh, scoop it onto there let me see if i've got an example here <laughs> and i really prefer those they're much easier okay yeah so here i've actually got two stitches or maybe a stitch and a half, I don't know. But you can hook the whole thing. And then there's plenty of space to even keep your stitch markers on there that you need for counting rows later on. So I just find those a lot easier to manage. Now, I do have a link. Um, you can go get those at like your local craft store. 
Um, maybe even Walmart, I'm not hundred percent sure, but you can definitely get them on Amazon. So I've got them linked in my Amazon storefront and I'll also put a link down below, but the size I get is 15 millimeters. I get them really cheap, like a hundred for $10. So they're not the best. Like they're kind of like er, er, squeaky. Yeah, I'm sure you could get nicer ones. Um, but because I do this all the time, it's nice just to have a whole stock of them. So the tutorial link and the link to buy, or if you just wanna look at that and then go to your local store and grab something, I'll have all that down below. And then, uh, uh, I think this is the last question. Uh, where did it go? Yes, last question. Um, except I just saw a new one on here, but we'll save that for next week. This is from Melanie Lynn. When knitting socks and doing gusset decreases, I find that the stitch before the slip slip knit is always loose. I've tried pulling the yarn before, after, and during the stitch, but it doesn't seem to help. Do you have any suggestions to make the slip slip knit side look as neat as the knit two together side? Thank you and love your podcast. Thanks, Melanie. Okay, so I have a couple suggestions for you. One, how are you slipping the stitches? That can matter. People do slip slip knit different ways. The way I like to do slip slip knit is I slip one stitch knit wise, the other stitch also knit wise, <laughs> and then put my yarn in the front, knit them together through the back. And I was thinking about this, need something. I need something to, to do it as I say it, because then I won't be confused. I was thinking about this and, and going, you know, when do I give an extra tug on the yarn? And so I realized, so I slip one knit wise, I know you're not really seeing this for me, but slip another one knit wise, put my needle into the front of those stitches, and then, and then I pull, and then I pull and hold that tension to complete. So I guess I pull before, not during, okay? Go into the next stitch, you can give a little extra tug, and that might help keep it tight. It does for me, um, but you know, we all knit differently, so it's kind of about finding what works for you. And then my other suggestion, so that's how, that's how I do it. I do slip one knitwise, slip one knitwise, knit two together through the back loop. Through the back loop? Let me see, slip, slip, yeah, knit through the back loop, okay. Um, my other suggestion is to do a different left-leaning increase. Maybe slip slip knit is not your left-leaning increase. There's, there's two others. Is that another ambulance? Maybe not, okay. There's two others that are pretty common. Um, slip one, slip, slip knit pass, I don't remember the abbreviation, but it's like slip one knit wise, knit one pass the slip stitch over. You could do that. I need to keep this in mind. Saturday, it's a terrible day to record. <laughs> or I guess if I did in the morning, it would be better. Okay, so slip one, knit one, pass the slip stitch over, or knit two together through the back loop. That's gonna be a tighter um, left leaning decrease. So maybe try out one of those and see how you like it. All right, there we go. We're caught up on questions, except I saw one more, which I'm gonna save for next week because it just came in today. <laughs> so I will be answering your questions now as they come in. Yes. All right, let's talk about news. The fall garment make along is coming up August 15th, Sunday, August 15th. This is a garment make along. All the details are linked on my website or on my website, which I'll link below um, so that you can go check that out. It's a three month almost because it's August 15th to November 6th. It's a three month make along. There's three different installments of the make along. They don't run the first to the end of the month. So look at the dates on there. Um, but basically for each month, we're gonna be um, chatting in a new Ravelry thread. And then I'm gonna give away prizes um, from that Ravelry, Ravelry thread each month. And I will close and then open up a new thread. So this is a progress make along, a whip, make along, there's no strict rules, just be working on a garment. Um, so because there's no strict rules about like size, weight, finishing things, um, size, weight of the yarn, <laughs> finishing any anything, um, just make sure it's a garment. Like that's pretty easy to just make sure it's a garment. I've got a definition, basically anything with the intention of being worn as clothing. So not accessories, not shawls, not scarves, not gloves, not hats, not socks. <laughs> Not probably a lot of other things, but anything that's like a top 
or a poncho or pants or a dress, any size, okay? All right. So that's the fall garment make along. Oh, and I'm going to be knitting the long summer cardigan finally with my Moon Glow Yarn Company fade set. The fade sets are still on sale. Um, you know what? I should grab it real quick. Hold on. Fade sets are still on sale from Moon Glow, Glow Yarn Company. So it's a pink fade starting with Love and Stitches pink. Ah! You can use this for so many things. These are 50 gram skeins. So if you're like, I love the set, I just wanna make something with the set. Um, depending on what size you need to make, you could potentially make a short sleeve top. Um, so like a garment just with this yarn, it's three and a half skeins of fingering weight yarn. Or you can use this combined with the main color and make all sorts of things, all sorts of shawls, all sorts of sweaters, which is what I'm gonna do. I've got four of these in Aspen and I'm gonna be making the long summer cardigan by Hohi Locatelli. I think there's a lot of other people planning to make it too, and they've got, some of them have this color, some of them have other colors, and it's so beautiful, I'm excited about that. But if you do wanna make this cardigan specifically, and you wanna knit it alongside me, and you want some tips and pointers along the way, I am doing a paid class that is going to run over I can't remember how many weeks it is, but again, I'll have the details down below, but we're gonna meet many, many times, go over lots of different things about the cardigan because I'm gonna be knitting it alongside you. We're not gonna finish <laughs> in the time that, that we have given because it is a big sweater. It is super, super long, um, but my hope is to kind of pace it for you. And um, if you're participating in, in coming to our Zoom classes and meetups and everything, that you're really gonna benefit from that. Um, so it's a combination like class slash community. So I'll spend about 10, 15 minutes at the beginning of each of our uh, meeting times talking about showing, demonstrating a technique. And then for the last part of it, we're just gonna chat and talk and see how everything's going. And you know, you can ask questions then too. And then we're gonna have our Discord community that's 24 seven, you know, always on there. You can ask other people questions that are making the sweater. I'll be checking in every day. Um, so it's gonna be really fun. So check out all the details on that um, down below. All right, that's the fall garment make along. So let's talk about second sock week. By the time you're watching this, second sock week is over, but right now it's not. <laughs> so I haven't pulled the prize winners yet. I'm doing that on Monday. Today's Saturday, I'm doing that on Monday. You're watching this on Thursday. Okay, I told you I have my energy back. Um, so I will be announcing the prize winners on Ravelry and on Instagram. So if you're watching this now, and you might already know who the winners are. Pro that's very likely, but if you haven't seen it yet, I will be announcing the winners in the next podcast. Hold on, now my battery's gonna die. When I tell Kit that this is like a seven part video, he is just gonna absolutely love that. <laughs> um, okay, what was I talking about? Second soft week. So I will be announcing the winners on a podcast but on the next one. So if you're watching this now, go look at Ravelry, go look at Instagram. You can see our three winners there. Um, but Second Sock Week has been really, really great. It's been super casual. I haven't done a lot of events um, except for the, the live kickoff and everything. So we might do something, I don't know. I wanted to do something today, but we'll see. <laughs> We'll see what happens. But anyway, so it's been really fun. Um, and I'm proud of myself for getting two socks done. That was the, or two pairs done. That was the goal. Um, I was thinking I was going to get the moon glow socks done, but it just turned out that I was like all into doing all the stock in it. So we'll see. I could still finish the moon glow sock by Sunday. Who knows? Um, but hopefully I'll have lots of socks to show you in the next podcast. All right, let's talk about life real quick. I am headed out today to Tennessee, provided all goes well. There's been a lot of canceled flights lately, especially on my airline that I'm flying. Um, so I am gonna be headed out here very, very soon in the next hour. Um, and I'm gonna be spending a week at home at my parents' house by myself. Kent and Toaster are not coming um, because Kent is gonna be traveling later in the month. And we just decided it would be more cost effective not to board Toaster with us going to Tennessee together. So I'm gonna miss him and I'm gonna miss Toaster <laughs> so much. Um, but it's gonna be really fun and different. I haven't gone to visit my parents alone, I think since the first year I got married. Um, I think I did that. And I haven't traveled without Kit in a long time. So I'm kind of nervous about like doing all the 
airport stuff. And plus I'm going there on the train and bus and just, you know, sometimes it's, it's when you're kind of an anxious person, person, like, or even if you're not, it can be very like plus plus it can make you flustered because I can't even talk right now because I'm flustered, but yeah, it can make you very flustered to like, okay, I got to do this and then figure this out. And like, it's just better, even if you don't know what you're doing to have someone there. And I just haven't traveled alone <laughs> in a long time. So, but I'm excited. I'm going to work. I'm going to see people. I'm going to go to the yarn store. Um, I have several member events this week. It's going to be, it's going to be good and relaxing. And my mom's going to cook and I think we're going to do some cleaning. So it's just going to be a great time. I'm very excited. Bringing me joy, of course, is traveling home. That's gonna be super, super great. Um, and finishing things up. If I can come back from this trip with a literal clean slate of no whips, that would be amazing, would it not? Um, so fingers crossed. You know how I like to give myself a lot of credit. <laughs> I am way overconfident when, I when it comes to getting stuff done. I'm like, sure, I can do it. And then other stuff happens anyway but i'm going to try my hardest and be more realistic this time and i think three socks three and a half socks is pretty realistic for a week away and a lot of travel time all right guys thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next one bye